Welcome to part 5 of our series of short videos on SUSE Manager. Today we're going to talk about content lifecycle management. So the concept of content lifecycle manager is not new and applies to pretty well any piece of digital content, following it through the beginning, through its middle stages and to the end of its creation. With SUSE Manager 4, the idea is applied to software that you intend to roll out to production systems. Content Lifecycle Management allows you to customize and test the packages for updating production systems. This is especially useful if you need to apply updates during a limited maintenance window. Now from within SUSE Manager, you can select software channels as sources, adjust them as required to your environment, and thoroughly and test them before installing them onto your production system. From beginning, where you work with your original development, to the middle, which is the testing phase, and then finally to the end, which would be deployment into production. With SUSE Manager, you can create content life cycles to track such things as monthly patches, maybe kernel versions for live updating, live patching, to these life cycles, you can add properties, sources, filters, vendors, base channels, environments, all sorts of things. While you cannot directly modify the vendor channels, what you can do is you can clone them, and then you modify the clones by adding or removing patches and packages and custom bits of whatever you need. You can then assign these cloned channels to test systems where you work on them test them, ensure they work as expected, and once all tests have passed, apply them to the production servers. So let's look at how we would create and use a project. First off, we go to Content Lifecycle. We have projects and filters listed here at the moment, but since we've never used this, there'll be nothing in there at the moment. So let's create a project. We have to give it a name. Now this has to be a lowercase and there's a restriction on what sort of balls you can use in it. So let's just give something descriptive. So it's going to be SLES 15 service pack 1 KVM server. We use that as the label. They don't have to be the same. And description. And create that. See the message it's created it successfully. Now we get to input sources so where's the information coming from the type is channel it's our only option at the moment and our new base channel these are the channels you've downloaded when uh, setting up SUSE manager match the products of the um, service that you're managing so CLS 15 we'll select that guy now we don't necessarily need all of these products but we'll take them anyhow in this case we save those so we have a channel, we have a source, our base channel and our child channels. Let's create a filter then. So, because I was playing with this before, there's some filters that actually I've already created. Um, let's do that. And we've selected these. Um, if you want to create your own another filter yourself you could create the filter just give it a name just to define whether it's a patch a package whether you want it to match the description you're going to give it I've given it in the filler name or just contains that um, sequence or any of those sequences and then finally you would deny it or allow it in the case of the KVM patterns I've selected, I'd want to allow them. And that's all there is to that. Let's add something to the our environment life cycle. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it SLES 15 oops, SP1 KVM uh, dev perhaps. nothing to insert before so we'll just save that okay 
So what we're seeing here is we have our project, we have our source, we have some filters, and hopefully it will install when it installs. Sleds 15, it will also install the KVM um, library patterns and the KVM tool patterns as well. And if we hit build, okay, so we have version one. You know, that you need to put a, a message now. It's important to follow this because you need to know what version you're at, whether it's before or after um, a certain particular one. So um, having this information is key. So let's call this initial install of slayers and kv and we'll hit build and it said it's building the project you can see down the bottom here there's a status cloning channels at the moment now it's generating repository data and it's built the image we've defined the project added sources added some filters to add some uh, new packages to it and we've done our first build in the uh, environmental life cycle so we can see at the bottom here we have version one and a bit of information about it and it is built if we go and look at now uh, projects we can see it here if we look at filters we've built a couple of filters and they are sitting in there now the next thing if we look in software channel list if we look at the SUSE channel you'll see there's those normal SUSE products that we've synced with SCC but under my channels we now have a new entry and this is our project that we've built so it's gone away and it's built its own software or cloned its own software channel which if we deployed from this channel we should end up with a SLES 15 SP1 server with the KVM patterns and libraries already installed. Let's add another another step in the life cycle so we go down to life cycle projects we have our project here we go down to our life cycle environment we have our first one that we've worked from and that's where SLEDS 15.1 is built from and he's, we've labelled him dev so let's add an environment um, SLEDS 15 KVM let's make it prod and we could have as many steps as we like in this but make it prod give it a description insert before now we don't want to insert before we want to insert after so environments created successfully and now we have two stages in our life cycle we have one that's been built and it's version one and now we have a second one which will be our prod server and it's just building the base part of that take a while we end up with an extra channel in the uh, software channels list so down the bottom here you can see we have development which we've attached to our SLES 5th machine and now we have a new one labeled prod and as we move our packages down the down through the chain the changes we make at dev will be promoted to prod now we will assign that prod to our production so what we have to do now is go to our systems go to the system that's going to be our production machine and change its base channel from the defaults so this 15 one that we built it with and we're going to give it the custom channel for production now i have two environments we have our development and our production at the moment they're both identical 
in our development life cycle we've decided okay now we're going to add a new bit of software a new patch a package whatever it might be and we'll want to test that and get it through the system so the, the way that works would be we can go to for example we can go and add a filter to our project and see we've got our KVM filters there now so we want to add the package for Maria DB. I've actually gone to the development machine and used a zipper and downloaded and installed MariaDB on it but I want everything to flow so let's just add a filter as an example so we can create a filter and our filter name will be let's call it Maria DB as a package name there's uh, several different options there and uh, where well, we can do packages patches and the matcher which say contains and the package name is just called Maria DB and we want to allow it so we've saved that and you can see we've added Maria DB down here and because we've already cloned our original version 1 of the channel so both of them are at version 1 now because we're making modifications you'll notice that our version history up here now is saying version 2 it's a draft because we haven't built it and it's saying check for changes below so that's where we see our extra filter here so it's the only change I want to make at this point I now have to build that and it will promote those changes into the development lifecycle channel hit build on that give it a message version 2 add maria db and we'll go off and you can see down here it's now building version 2 of our channel with those changes into the development channel so that will be reflected in the development machine so we've now promoted or we've now built our development server with the um, changes the addition of maria db to it we would then go out and do all our testing on the physical server and make sure everything's okay now we've done all those tests we're very happy with it we want to promote it all you have to do at that point is then go down to the promote button so we've got version 1 currently down on production and we're going to promote version 2 to it we just press the promote button confirm that's what we want to do it says we're going to promote version 2 down to production and off it goes and then it re-clones that, that channel development through to production. Development server has been promoted through to production in our environment. Both are the same, so it's all ready to, uh, to, to go into production. And from a uh, project point of view, the cycle would now repeat itself. So you'd go up and add your next stages your next modifications and build the development environment and then when you're ready after all your testing promote it through to the next stage